So 1.2 is all about displaying quantitative data with graphs. We've been talking about categorical data. We've been talking about bar charts and uh, or, I'm sorry, bar charts and pie graphs. Now we're going to start talking about quantitative data. So quantitative, here we go. We're going to start with an example. Brian and Jessica have decided to move and are considering seven different cities. The graphs below show the daily high temperatures in June, July, and August for each of these cities. Help them pick a city by answering these questions. What type of graphs are these? These are dot plots. Yeah. Now, um, we have, what, seven? We have seven different dot plots here. Um, and then we have just one scale on the bottom. That is called a side-by-side -side or parallel dot plot. Um, so we've got them all together, all of them sharing one axis. Uh, what does each dot represent? So if I look at a single dot, what does that dot represent? One day. Daily high temperature. One day's daily high temperature. Perfect. All right, so let's look at the first three, A, B, and C. What do you guys notice uh, similarities and differences between those graphs A, B, and C? They all have a different high temperature. They all have, what, what do you mean? They all have a different high temperature. They all have all time highs. Okay, all of them have different all time highs. Good. What else do you notice? They're all the same shift. <laughs> So this data is probably made up because they're all literally the same graph. They're just shifted, okay? So I, we basically kind of just shifted where you would see the average or the center of the graph. So we've just kind of shifted the graph around. So this, basically we are focusing on the fact that their center or average is different. Perfect. All right, now we're going to look at C and D. Would you guys say that the centers on C and D are the same or different, or what do you think? So if I kind of look at where the center is, they're, they're pretty close. I, I, would, I would say that C is maybe slightly lower than D, but for the most part, the centers are pretty close. What is different, though? D is more sparse. Very good. And the the higher range, bigger range. Yeah, so, whoops. I started to write range in the middle of my word spread. The spread or range is bigger for D. The spread or the range, the variability, if you will, is different, is bigger for D than it is for C, okay? All right, now we're gonna look at D versus E. So, again, let's think back to the centers. Are the centers about the same? Okay, is the range or the spread the same? Wait, yeah, the range. Yeah. The range, also the spread. So when we talk about spread, we are gonna basically be talking about low to high. Like we're literally gonna list what's your low number, what's your high number. So the numbers you would use for range. So actually the spread here is considered the same because it's got the same low and the same high. But what is different? Yeah, E is more compact and E has like these two weird looking, what are those? Ah, yes, outliers. Outliers are present. In E and E is more compact, obviously, other than the outliers. Okay, so now we're going to look at C, so the third graph, F, and G. C, F, and G. Looking at those, what's the most obvious difference between those three graphs? C, F, and G. So the third C, one and then the last two. C rises in the middle and then decreases and then one of them only decreases the other one. 
Okay, good. So C rises in the middle and then decreases. Um, F just basically decreases the whole time as we go from left to right. G is increasing the whole time as we go from left to right. So these two graphs, F and G, these, they're, they're called skewed. They're skewed graphs. This one is symmetric, all right? So that's all talking about their shapes. So the shapes are different. So C is symmetric. F and G are skewed. So what we've just uncovered here are the four qualities that we're going to want to talk about when we are describing what a distribution looks like for quantitative data. These four qualities are the four that we're going to want to talk about. We're going to want to talk about the center, the spread, if there's outliers, and we're going to want to talk about the shape of the distribution. We're going to talk about these four qualities every time we need to describe a distribution or compare distributions. All right, so on the next page here, we're going to make some notes about how to do each of those. So we've kind of already talked about shape. We're gonna to wanna to notate if it's symmetric or if it's skewed. We can also talk about any peaks or clusters. We are definitely gonna to wanna to identify any outliers. What are outliers anyway? Exactly. It's that weird kid that sits over at the lunch table by himself because nobody wants to hang out with him. He's an outlier. Obviously away from the group. You know what you should do with an outlier? Go get them. Bring them over. Say, come sit with us. Outliers are unusually large or small data values. They're the ones that are unusually large or small. They're pretty obvious, all right? And when we see them, we're going to want to call them out. We're going to want to say, hey, there's an outlier right there. And we want to notate that. We're going to definitely talk about the center of the distribution. Now, there's two different ways to talk about center. One way is the average, the mean. You guys have been doing averages for a really long time. But the other way is median. Anybody heard of a median before? What's a median? The middle. It's the middle number. Very good. Depending on what shape the data is will depend on which one of these we would want to use. If our data is symmetric, we're going to want to use the mean most often. I'm not saying you can't use the median, but we're more likely going to want to use the mean in a symmetric distribution. For a skewed distribution, we're going to be more likely to want to use the median. For a skewed distribution, we're going to probably want to use the median. And I'll, we'll talk about why later. All right. And then the last thing we want to make sure we want to talk about is the spread. So this is a little different than range. We want to actually notate the low and the high number. We literally want to list them. Okay, so we're going to list the low to high value. Why do you think that we would actually list the low to the high value and not just say the range is 10? Absolutely, it gives more information. From one to 11, what's the range? 10, but from 121 to 131, what's the range? 
to n, but aren't those very different data sets? Okay, so we wanna, we wanna list the low and the high value so we know exactly where it's located. So you guys, these are all of the qualities you're gonna wanna address anytime you need to describe a distribution. How are you supposed to remember this? Shape, outlier, center, spread. Socks. When you are asked to describe a distribution, you're going to want to talk about the socks. Shape, outlier, center, spread. Shape, outlier, center, spread. What does socks stand for? I'm sorry. I, I, I think I got you, but let me try again. What does socks stand for? Shape, outlier, center, spread. Very good. We want to make sure we talk about our socks. You guys are going to talk about socks probably more than anything else you're going to do this year is socks. So you should get real comfortable with your socks, okay? Socks. All right. Now, I want to talk a little bit about shape. So let's talk a little bit about some different kinds of shape. You can have a symmetric distribution. Here is a symmetric distribution. Does that look pretty symmetric to you? No. Ish. But wait, this is also symmetric. But wait, this is also symmetric. Sort of. That one's kind of bad. Yeah, see, you really hurt my feelings. These are symmetric. All of these are symmetric. So yes, symmetric is good, and we're gonna use symmetric a lot. Like most of our data this year is gonna be approximately symmetric. But we would maybe also wanna notate one of the other features whenever we're saying that something is symmetric. So maybe we wanna say it's symmetric and unimodal. What does unimodal mean? One peak. <laughs> this means one peak. Now, this is unimodal, but that is also unimodal. And so is that one. So look, if I just say unimodal, it could be any one of these. But if I say unimodal and symmetric, I now have really put come down to just one. Yes. This is not unimodal. This, this, uh, the rectangle one here, I'm about to tell you, uh, but it is uniform because it doesn't have a peak really. It just goes straight across. Okay. All right, bimodal. What's bimodal mean? Two, Two, peaks. Two peaks. You got it. This is bimodal. Now, some people think, okay, if it's bimodal, it's automatically symmetric. Not true. Check this one out. That's bimodal. There's two clear peaks, but that one is bimodal and it's skewed. I could also go the other way and it could be bimodal and skewed. So, again, if I say bimodal and symmetric, I have come down to just one option. Uniform, since Stone asked about it, uniform means all the same. That's it. This is a uniform distribution. It's every, every data value is going to have the same value. All right, here we go. Skewed left and right. Are you ready? I'm going to draw a skewed left graph. I promise, this is skewed to the left. Shh. That is skewed left. I promise it's skewed left. Some of you are looking at that going, you are messed up, Miss Lakey. No, I'm not. I promise it's skewed left. Here's why. When you think of something being skewed, that means it's like off, right? 
Where is the off data? On the left. Okay? So it's skewed off to the left. That is a skewed left graph. What's skewed right? Like that. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little trick that might be helpful to remember which one is which. A skewed left graph. Looks like your left foot. A skewed right graph. Looks like your right foot. A uniform graph. Looks like you need some new toes. No, I'm kidding. Is this the uniform one? Also <laughs> symmetric. Yes, uniform is also symmetric. So, skewed left, skewed right. Do you guys have any questions on how to tell if something's skewed left or skewed right? All right. This. This part of the graph is called the tail. So if your tail of your graph is on the left, then it is left skewed. If your tail is on the right, then it's right skewed. Again, you can think about your feet, think about what your feet look like, and that should help you with that. If nothing else, this disturbing image will help you. It's fine. All right, we're gonna practice this. You ready? All right, don't say anything. Just look at the graphs for a second. Don't say anything. These graphs are not on your paper. Don't say the answer. Just look at these for a second. I will tell you that they all have a different way to be described. Okay. All right. This top left here is A. This is B, this is C, this is D. Are y'all with me? All right. Which graph could be labeled as bimodal? C. C, absolutely correct. Any questions about that? No. Awesome. Would you say that this one is uh, symmetric or skewed? No. It's pretty close. Uh, if you were going to say it was skewed, you would say it was skewed to the left because the left is low. Okay. But that one's it's kind of close. All right. Ready? Which graph is skewed to the right? D. D as in dog. Yes. Very good. Very good. What's another way I could describe this? Unimodal. Very nice. Which graph is approximately symmetric? A. Does anyone think that A is bimodal? I can. Yes, it is. Does anyone think it's trimodal? So, I want to tell you guys, when you're looking at shape, you're kind of looking at the, just like a very quick glance overall type shape. You're not looking at the details, okay? You're just kind of looking at kind of a glance at it. If I kind of glance at it, it looks approximately symmetric, good enough, okay? I wouldn't talk about the details of those little dips there at 8 and 10. So that one is approximately symmetric and unimodal. All right, last one over here. What is B? <laughs> Skewed left. Do you guys have any questions about that? Perfect. Fantastic. All right, we are going to create a side-by-side -side or parallel dot plot of your fastest speed driven data. So, let me go ahead first and tell you some instructions. Because I know once you have these in your hands, it's all, we're going crazy. All right, so listen up. Y'all are like super ready for Friday. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. What is a side-by-side -side dot plot? Two dot plots. 
It's actually top and bottom, like this. These parallel dot plots are also called side-by-side -side dot plots. So it's like that be the, begin the, the graphs at the beginning. You guys are gonna make, you guys are gonna make side-by-side -side or parallel dot plots of the fastest speed driven data separated by males and females. I don't care which one you put on the top, it doesn't matter, you figure that out. But you need to separate them by males and females. Now, there only needs to be one scale. But if you wanna draw like another line just to help you with stacking, that's fine. Also, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, do it on there, I'm gonna do it on here. We are going to have to do some rounding, okay? So you're going to do your scale by tens. I don't know what the lowest number is, but whatever. You're going to go by tens. So whatever the lowest number is, and then you're going to have to go all the way to the highest number, whatever it is. And here's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to round every number to the closest 10. So if someone says that they went 82 miles per hour, where would you put that dot? 82. At 80. We're rounding to the nearest 10. If someone says they went 94, where would you put it? 90. If someone says they went 98, where would you put it? 100. Does this make sense? Okay. And then again, you can put another line here just to help you stay even, but do not redo a scale. Okay. And then you're going to want to notate whether you did males and females on the side. Does this make sense? Okay. I'm going to give you the data and you're going to make these dot plots. Here we go. All right, so here is the graph of the data. Now, I've seen a couple of people do something that I want to make sure that I am very clear you should not be doing when you're doing a parallel or a side-by-side -side box. They did this, the bottom one, think about just the bottom one, and then they added the males in a different color. That's not, that's, that's not okay. You can't do that because then you can't see the differences as easily. So it is literally two separate graphs that share a scale on the bottom, all right? We did uh, label them males versus females. Now, if you switch these and you put the males on the bottom, that's totally fine. It's just make sure that they are two separate, but yet sharing one scale. Does that make sense? Yes. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop there, and on Monday we will compare these.